you you'll make a lot of different uh, changes and edits and you won't realize you're actually in play mode. And the problem is when you're in play mode, I think it's like 90% of the time, most of those changes do not come through. They're just kind of on the fly changes to let you test while you're playing the game. So you wanna have that color set up so you know you're in a separate mode. It just really helps visually. Definitely. You'll forget. If you don't have it set up, you definitely will forget. So it's good to have that color there. So right when you hit play, you know that, hey, I'm in a different mode. I like to use like red. Some people use, I use like a yellow. It just yeah, the yellow shows up, I think, a little better on camera here than the yeah. red. I used to use red all the time. And so if, if we notice, I'm in play mode right now. If I'm not tinting yellow, I might forget about it. And I come in here, I'm going to create just a couple, I don't know, a, a sphere, a cube. The important thing is I'm making changes to my scene. I get out of play mode, they all disappear. So play mode is a temporary playground for you to test your game. Very important setting. Down here, this is your project explorer. This maps to a folder on your file system. Unity projects always, always, always are in the assets folder. I typically say don't mess with this folder structure here unless you know what you're doing. If you go to source control, which we'll talk about shortly, you really only care about the assets and project settings folder. Um, don't mess with these folders, again, unless you know what you're doing. So I'm going to close that out here. Everything is underneath the assets folder. So anything you bring in your project is going to always build in their assets. You're not going to rename assets. Everything goes under there. So this is essentially uh, synonymous to your solution explorer in a sense inside of Visual Studio. So we have our scene tab, our design surface, our game tab. This is when we're playing our game. And over here in our hierarchy, this is anything that's currently in our scene. So let me go ahead, 3D object. I'll create that cube again, double click on it to bring it into focus. Now I have all of its properties here. This is an important concept uh, known as a game object. Everything in your scene here is a game object. Uh, with the only exception being this, uh, this sky box, which we're going to talk about in the next module in the background here and the changes that came in Unity 5 for those. And what we'll notice is that an actual game object itself is very basic. It has a name, a tag, which is just a text string that you can use to uh, search for objects in code. For example, I can say, hey, Unity, give me the object tagged player. Names can change at runtime, so we typically ask for objects by tags. Um, you can search for objects by name. It's a little bit slower operation as well. But so you have a name, a tag, and a transform, the most important property in Unity. This is a position. Notice as I take my cube here, its position changes. I can rotate it, click on my little lines here, mm -hmm. and I can scale it out. So position, rotation, and scale is the transform, very important property. Every game object has those properties. Even an empty game object has those properties. And all of your game objects come to life through components. And we talked about this quite a bit in depth in our first one. Again, this is just a quick kind of a refresher on the Unity interface here. And if I take any other object here and add it, so for example, if I add a button, we're going to talk about UI later on today. So if I add a button to my screen here and I look at that button, that is also a game object. Everything here is a game object. Now, if I want code in my project, create a C -sharp script, test script, we'll call that. And by default, the editor is monodevelop. Um, we can take code and just assign it to game objects, just like this, if I want that code to run on that cube. Simple drag and drop. There we go, drag and drop. There's like four ways you can add it. You can drag it, drop here. <laughs> you can actually drag it up into your scene under a game object. Uh, you can bring it over here. You can actually add it through here or drag and drop it this little area, all different ways you can add it. Uh, and lastly, you have this 2D button. So again, Unity is a 3D system at heart. If we look at the project we're going to work with today, we can see this is full 3D. I have this 2D button, which just fixes me to X and Y. Just See, I can't, I can't rotate. I can only move left and right. This is very good for when you're dealing with projects like, um, let's actually show the 2D project. Yeah. The 2D version of this 3D game. <laughs> which actually, it, it, the 3D one kind of looks cool. In the, yeah. In the 2D version, now that I'm looking at it, a little orthographic view there. So the, um, the cool thing is both of these projects will be open source uh, on my GitHub account. Again, I'll be putting up that URL in the next module here. And let's take our 2D project and just kind of show you that real quick here. Just so you can see, I think it's kind of cool to look at the 2D settings here. Got that one second to load up. There we go. Maximize on play. My resolution might be a little off on this. You might see some black bars on the side here. But yeah, so that's the uh, it's the the original the the original version of uh, Vamp Kid. And 
one of the things that we're going to be doing in the wow factor module is when our vamp kid dies today, notice uh, when I hit a zombie here, boom, blows up in these little bats, these little animated bats. So we actually have that in the 3D project as well. So you'll see some overlap between these two projects. But the point I want to show you here is in 2D mode, let's double click on an object here. Notice it's still 3D. <laughs> it's just a thin plane in 3D space. So this is just a helper button, just to lock you to 2D while you're working this interface. Yeah, now everything in, in 2D space, um, it's basically essentially flattened on a plane, like you said. I think there's a canvas that actually appears in your, in your project where you can actually put all your elements. But the way it works is it, it deals with sorting. So uh, 2D elements, when you start applying them, when you start building a 2D project, you can actually add sorting layers. So in essence, they are all flattened, but sorting basically tells the camera on which to render in a certain order. So you get the feeling of depth, depth and different things by using the sorting order. Yep, yeah. very important on cameras. We're going to talk about uh, layers and sorting layers when we, when we go over uh, everything I wish they told me about cameras. I think that was the name <laughs> of that one. Yeah. Everything I wish they told me about cameras. All right, so real basic Unity uh, overview there. Um, actually, I'll do one last thing here before we kind of continue on. And let's take that script that I assigned to my cube, was it? Just to show you the defaults, if you download Unity now and install it, let's go back to MonoDevelop here. MonoDevelop is the cross-platform editor that's installed. So if you, uh, if you load this on a Mac, for example, this is the editor that you're going to get. Visual Studio is not available on a Mac right now. So um, if you load this up, this is what you're going to get. And also, if you install it on a PC, this is what you're going to get by default. We're going to change it up shortly, though. And also, I th we announced a month or two ago a pretty special relationship that we're going to have with Unity. And one of the options on install is going to be um, being able to select Visual Studio Community Edition during your Unity install. So that gets all set up for you by default. Very cool. All right, so when this starts up, debug.log, starting up. What am I, well, who's starting up? How do we know who's starting up? Game object dot name. So this says, whatever game object we're assigned to, this is you're going to find this name out right here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we start. You'll notice there's a brief delay when we go back to Unity. If you saw the, uh, the icon spin there, the mouse pointer. Um, let's play this, this super exciting game that we have here. First time I opened up Unity's interface, I was like, uh, now what? Because <laughs> you can see all these really cool things that you do. Um, if we look in the console window here, which you can always load through Window Console. It's not there by default. Also, if you click on this little line at the bottom of the screen there, that will load up the console window as well. Sometimes there's error messages that you won't see unless you're actually looking at the very bottom of your screen there. You click on them, and it opens up the console window. And it says starting up, I forgot a space there, starting up cube. If I take that game object and I assign it to anything else, let's like, uh, I'll put it on my directional light, and I'll put one on my main camera as well. Click on play, and I should see three of those debug statements now. There we go, starting up camera, directional light, and cube. Real easy to create code and assign it to game objects. And with that, let's move on and talk about using the Visual Studio tools for Unity. Uh, this model develop is here, Unity is here, and it uses a mono soft debugger interface to talk between the two of them. So you edit your code, but then when you want to debug, um, you can actually attach to this virtual interface running inside of Unity and, and debug inside that little virtual environment. When you click play in play mode, you can connect the debugger into that virtual environment. Um, so out of the box, I worked with Model Develop. Syntax Tree developed uh, a wrapper around this for Visual Studio. And uh, they used to sell it, and then we bought the company and turned around and released it for free and brand this as the Visual Studio Tools for Unity. So in order to do that, you search for Visual Studio Tools for Unity on the net, and you download the version appropriate to whatever Visual Studio you have. It does not work with Visual Studio Express, which I think we've kind of deprecated now because we have released Visual Studio Community Edition. Community Edition is a pretty full-featured version of Visual Studio that supports plugins, which Express did not, uh, and, and therefore makes, this, uh, makes you be able to use this with Express. You needed the retail version of Visual Studio. You couldn't use it with Express, so this was a really cool move, I think, uh, that we did here. Very cool. So Visual Studio Tools for Unity. 
This allows you to use Visual Studio to not only edit, because with Unity you can literally use Notepad if you want to edit your code. This allows you to edit and debug your code as well. And I think it does a better job than Mono Develop at debugging. There are some things that show up better in Visual Studio. Um, Coming from a from an artist side uh, who's just starting to learn programming, I have to say that Visual Studio is just it, it, it's, it's so much easier for me to use than yeah. than Mono Develop. Not to say Mono Develop's bad. It's just more full it's feature. just a little more intuitive. There's yep. a lot. There's more. There's features. It kind of even assists you while you're writing code. It kind of gives you you know the definition. Good auto completion kind of and telesense. Yeah. So really good. If you're if you're starting out, I'd highly recommend it. Um, it's just going to help you a lot with your code yeah. and making sure you, you get your syntax proper and all that kind of stuff. So That's right. It's good. Uh, and you can get third part third party plugins that integrate with Visual Studio, which I use as part of my daily workflow. Uh, some really really nice plugins. So Visual Studio tools for Unity uh, gives you shader syntax highlighting, code templates, which I'll show you in a second. A lot of folks that even use Visual Studio tools for Unity don't know about the code templates. Um, IntelliSense, which is essentially the auto completion for you, um, the recommendations, code completions, full debugging support, and uh, in some cases better debug visualization than than what Mono Develop provides you and a better debugging experience overall. So Visual Studio, Unity, two separate products. Visual Studio Tools for Unity is the bridge that goes between them. And it underlying uses the same thing that Mono Develop uses to talk back to Unity. It's this Mono Soft Debugger interface. So it, it's not like everything was rewritten again. Uh, it's a wrapper around the Mono Soft Debugger interface and with a plugin that allows it to work inside of Visual Studio. Let's look at Visual Studio Tools for Unity. I'm going to assume that you have downloaded it and installed it onto your system. And let's go over here. Once you install it on your system, it's good from the Visual Studio side. Now, on every single Unity project that you need it in, you need to bring it into that solution. And the way that you do that is Assets, Import Package, and it'll show up here. If you've just installed it, close Unity out and reopen it. Uh, these map to just a folder on your file system. Um, and you can actually drop any .unity package file in there and it will show up in this folder. So Visual Studio 2015 tools, I will import it into my project. It brings in just two files here. And we'll see those show up in my project interface here. Give that a second to finish. It's going to import those, compile, and you'll notice a Visual Studio Tools menu pops up there. One note, if you're just starting out using Unity and maybe you're bringing in broken code into your project, you're downloading some code off the internet that might not work and you're dragging and dropping it in your project, uh, both with Mono Develop and Visual Studio, Unity will not generate the proper project files for you unless your code compiles the first time. Uh, once you've already gotten around that, it's already generated your project files for you and you can double click and open code. But it's a common kind of beginner trap. You load it, load Unity up, drag and drop some things that you got from the net. The code doesn't work. You can't open it up. You get errors. Uh, note that you kind of have to have that first project that gets created for you and then go ahead and, and bring things in. So I've got a real simple script here. If I had noticed under Edit, Preferences, External Tools, which is where I could configure Notepad if I wanted to, to edit my code with, if you like painful things like that. Um, Mono Develop, which was the default. Now it's Unity VS.open file. So I'm going to X that out. If I double click on my code now, Voila. Visual Studio is loading up. This Now you'll notice I'm running the enterprise version here. This experience is the exact same with the Visual Studio Community Edition as well. There's no difference here whatsoever. This is the release candidate for Visual Studio 2015. Uh, this looks the exact same in 2013 and 2012 as well. The process is all the same. Give this a second. It's going to load up, and I have some additional Visual Studio plugins in here, so uh, just take one minute to kind of initialize. While that's doing that, I just want to talk about when you click on a script file here in Unity, notice on the right-hand side here, you can see your code. Uh, this is not. This is just a little preview. You don't edit it over here. This just kind of gives you a little bit of a preview there. All right, let's go back to the Visual Studio side here. And if you notice, there's this Assets folder here. And this, for folks that are used to using Visual Studio, you might be just saying, well, can I just compile my program and run it here? No, because this is meant to work in conjunction with Unity. So let's open up that script, and I'll show you what I mean here. There's my debug.log. I'll set a breakpoint here, so it'll stop on execution. Now notice, instead of like uh, deployed to local machine, there's attached to Unity here. So I can attach Unity and play. I'm just going to attach Unity first. There we go. This is all set to go. All I do, this is waiting for me now. I go over to Unity. I can still design, do all my stuff in the environment here. When I click on play, 
compiles everything, and then I should see the breakpoint get hit inside of Visual Studio here. You notice a brief delay as it's starting up. There we go. Starting up game object.name, get all the full debugging support here I would expect inside of Visual Studio. Works great. Increase that a little bit. Just continue. Or if I stop, this is important to note, if I stop, this does not kill Unity. This just stops my debugging session. My game is actually still running inside of Unity. So a slightly different workflow than you may have been used to 